We just released UPOPS 2.29 to our SaaS. In this video, I'll give you a quick overview of what you can expect from this release. First thing I want to talk about is port forwarding. This is a new functionality that's still in beta, so if you want access to it, do let us know. So what can you do with port forwarding? It allows you to open up a port on your deployment instance to a public port that you can actually access. So this allows you to run things like Jupyter directly on the deployment instance in UPOPS. Or it allows you to uh, establish SSH connections to a running deployment instance, which could give you more tools for debugging. Let me actually show you how these two cases would work. So I've got a deployment prepared here that actually spins up a Jupyter environment directly on the instance. So how this works is from within my uh, deployment code, I actually spawn the Jupyter process for the code. Please check the link in the description and our release notes for a full tutorial. And the other things I changed are inside the deployment settings. So port forwarding only works with dedicated instances. So you can also see that I'm using a dedicated instance. Um, so if you want to use port forwarding for deployment, do make sure that you pick a dedicated instance type uh, from the instance type dropdown. <laughs> and then the second thing I changed is in the port forwarding section. You can find this also in the advanced section of the deployment edit form. And here you can specify which deployment port should be opened up to which public port. In this case, Jupyter always runs on 8888, so that's the one that I use. I also set my minimum number of instances to one to make sure that this, uh, that this node is actually running. So now when I click save, I can actually check out this Jupyter environment that's running now on this 4K instance. So if I can a request to it, I'll get a URL back at which I can actually access this Jupyter environment. So let me copy that and then paste it in my browser and show you how this works. I can just paste this in. And this is now spinning up a Jupyter environment. And this is running directly on the instance. So this is not running on my local laptop. And in here, I've basically got a full ID now that I can work with. So I can create a new notebook um, and I can use this for experimentation and development uh, to try and develop code to run on this instance before I actually package everything up inside a deployment package. So in here, I can run things like, hello. Nope, I made a mistake. There we go. Um, and it's also possible to install packages directly in here. So if I want pandas, I can just install that from here and really work with it as if it's uh, a local development environment, but then it's running directly on the instance. So please use this if you need a little bit more iteration speed um, while developing and you don't have access uh, to a development environment locally. It's also possible to use this functionality for establishing the SSH connection. Um, for a full tutorial on that and a tutorial on how to exactly replicate the Jupyter deployment that I just made, um, please have a look at the release notes for full tutorials and all the details on how this works. So that's it for port forwarding. If you need it, do send us a message and we'll make sure to enable it for you so you can test it out and use it. Next to port forwarding, uh, we also made a bunch of improvements to our pipeline service. Uh, a lot of them are under the hood, but what you will notice is a three times speed increase for what it was before for request handling for pipelines. So we do hope you enjoy that speed up there. Uh, another thing that we changed has to do with um, with the create sub request operator. So let me show you quickly. So for the create request uh, create sub request operator, which we have here, you normally had to set a batch size um, for us to be able to put all the sub requests in specific batches for the next deployment of your pipeline. But this is actually no longer needed for you to set that yourself. Um, because we've added some logic to determine the most optimal batch size for you automatically based on all your deployment settings. So if I now drag in this create sub request operator, you can see that you only have to select what source object you want to uh, create sub request to work for. And for the batch size, it's by default set to automatic. So that means that we will decide the most optimal batch size for you to work with. Um, if you do want to override this for whatever reason, you still can. So everything that you did before will still continue to work. Uh, but it's also possible to shift that logic to us so that we will make sure that you have the most optimal batch size for your create sub request operator. Okay. We also made a couple of changes to the way metrics are visualized in the UI because we got some feedback from you that 
a lot of you missed the, the bar charts, so now it's possible for each graph to determine whether you want to see it as a line chart or as a bar chart. So for the deployment request, for instance, if you just want to see the total number of requests made in a day, you can see that. But if you want to see the request rate and the differences there, you can also switch to that. So this little button on the graph card, you can use to switch back and forth between line charts and bar charts um, and adjust it to your liking. Okay. Um, those are the big um, functionality changes that are included in this release. Other than that, most of the changes have been under the hood optimizations to make UVOPs more robust, more reliable, um, and more speedy as well. Mm. Uh, do check the full release notes for all the details of exactly what is included in this release and what is not. Um, we hope you enjoy the new changes and let us know if you have any feedback or any questions.